It's time to benchmark a game with a Mac. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery. And recently on the channel, we've been taking a look at this Mac Mini with the M1 versus this Mac Mini with the M2. And recently put out a video that tested out the video editing capabilities of those. I'll go ahead and pop that up here somewhere. And we tested those up against this uh, iPad Pro and also a MacBook Air with the M1 processor. So check that out if you haven't seen that yet. But today we're going to be looking at a game. In fact, this game, No Man's Sky, a game that I've talked about several times both on the uh, podcast and on the YouTube channel. A game that I love to play. I've been playing it on the Steam Deck recently. I played it on the PlayStation 4. I play it on my gaming PC. And now I'm testing it out on these Apple Silicone devices here. So what I did was I played just a, a few minutes on the Mac Mini M1 and captured that to a capture card. Again, this is capturing to another computer, so it has nothing to do with the performance of the Mac itself. Did the same thing with the Mac Mini M2. And I'm going to put that up on the screen here in just a second to show the frames per second difference between the two. So if you watch the other video where I did the test with the video rendering, you'll know that I was a little surprised with the performance difference between the two, or lack thereof. So I wanted to see if it was just something that LumaFusion wasn't taking advantage of with the, uh, the M2 processor, uh, or if it's just something that is normal. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the footage of No Man's Sky. Alright, so when we set up the graphics settings in both the games here, I set them up just to the standard 1080p high, which is what it actually defaulted to. Now I did go in there and turn off the VSync, and I also set the uh, max FPS up to, I started at 91 on the uh, Mac Mini M1, but then on the M2 it actually bumped up above that, so I brought that one up to 150. So if you look at the scores here, and I tried to keep the same type of kind of scene where it's mostly looking at the ground and not much of the, the horizon or the sky or anything. You can see the frames per second are uh, noticeably different. On the left there with the M1, it's sticking around the 70 to 80 range. And on the M2, it's going from the uh, low 80s all the way up to the 100 sometimes. So about 10 to 15 percent difference between the two, it looks. Now when I first watched this back, I thought there was a little bit of a detail difference between the two, but I don't think that's the case. I think the picture on the left had the sun at the back of the player, and the one on the right, the, the, the time of day was a little bit different, and there wasn't as much sun shining directly onto the guy's backpack. So I think that's the difference that we're seeing a little bit in what looked like a, a detailed difference. So as we just saw in the video, there was a noticeable difference between the M2 and the M1. It looked like about a 10 to 15% frames per second jump on the M2, which is more what I was expecting to see. Uh, the M2 being a stronger processor and having more GPU power, I was expecting to see that to uh, perform better in the game, and sure enough it did. Is it enough to make you upgrade from an M1 to an M2? You know, probably not. Are you using this as a gaming machine in the first place? Probably not. I consider gaming on, on the Mac Minis just kind of a bonus, right? It's a great machine for all-around computing, and then it can play some games also. It was getting better frames per second on these than I'd get on my Steam Deck. It was getting better frames per second on these than I got on my Steam Cube that I built. I'll go ahead and put a, a link up here to a video where I built a Steam Cube. Um, basically a small little PC to play games with similar performance specs to the Steam Deck. So I am impressed with the fact that they can play the game so well. Now I do hope in the future that more and more game companies do take advantage of the, you know, stronger processor power of these Apple silicone chips and start making their games compatible with the Apple computers. But that's going to wrap it up for this short and sweet episode. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you found it interesting. Uh, if you have any kind of tests that you want me to do between these two, go ahead and let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see. If I can set up the test, then I'll be happy to do so. But again, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. I appreciate that. 
And if you want to see more stuff, go ahead and stay tuned and click that subscribe button. But thank you as always for watching. Until next time, peace out and geek out.